So while I go ahead and style my form, I'm going to do a couple of things real quick. I'm going to create some new rules. The ones I'm actually interested in, I don't need to be this specific, is I'm going to choose for where I have my form. I want to make sure I have the form tag and not the pound form one, which is a specific ID. That way if I have multiple forms on a page, this rule applies for everything. I'm looking specifically for my list items in my unordered list. Make sure it goes to my right CSS document, say OK. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my list category. My list type is going to be none. I hit apply and see if those disappear. And then I'm going to go to my box category and I'm going to clear my floating left and say OK. So this is just going to make it so it looks, this is going to make it so it looks a little bit nicer, a little bit cleaned up. Say OK. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to want to fix this whole ragged edge thing that I have going on. So I'm going to do a couple of different things real quick. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new style, a new rule. So I create my new rule. I want my rule to apply to both my inputs as well as my labels in this case. So I'm going to say label, comma, input, comma, select, comma, text area. This is why it's so important to know what the HTML tags are instead of just what Dreamweaver recalls these tags. Because this way, if we actually know what the tags are, we can start to apply them. The comma allows me to apply the same rules to all of the elements that are listed here. So this is all the elements I'm going to have for the most part in my forms. Let's say OK. Now one of the things that's a little bit interesting is the text area and the input fields have different default fonts. Now if we're using the 960 grid system, we have a font applied, but we may want to use a different font because it's in a form so it stands out. Also, if we're not using a reset uh, CSS document with some sort of CSS framework, we'll need to make sure that these are the same. So I'm just going to choose random, make it 14 pixels. This is going to make it just a little bit bigger than my normal size. I'm going to come over here and box, and I'm going to say float left, say apply, and say OK. Definitely does not look like it needs to. If I click on live view, you're seeing some things just kind of go off. I haven't really helped things, so I'm going to, need to add a couple more rules. So I'm going to create a new CSS rule. This is just going to be for my labels. Go my box. I'm going to give it a width and move my CSS rule just a little bit so I can see my edges here. If I say 250 pixels, I have more than enough room for this who do you need a contact field. However, it makes all my other fields so large that it makes it very difficult to use. So what happens if I say 125 pixels. Now I'm a whole lot closer. Who do I need to contact just goes to two lines. And I can live with that. Some other things I might want to do make it just a little bit easier to read is I might go, for example, to my block category, my text align, choose right. So now I have a hard right edge so I can easily see that this label goes with this text input. But if you notice it's so close, things like your email where it has those hard lines make it really difficult to see. So I'm going to go to my box category, uncheck the same for all for margin, and apply a five pixel margin to the right. And you'll notice that now I have that little bit extra space, I'm a whole lot easier to use. Say OK. Now I still have, for example, the your comments and questions cause some real big issues. In fact, questions is pushing off into my text box. If I put my cursor there and put a space, now it becomes a whole lot easier because the slash was preventing me from moving to a new line. When I put the space there, your comments slash questions goes in a lot easier. So now we have most all of this lined up. However, where I have my radio buttons, I'm still not looking like I would want to. If I go on live view, I'm not going to look correct either. This is because if I look in my source code real quick, you notice that I wrap a label around each of the inputs. And my label my inputs now have specified widths. They're floating. We're causing some serious issues with this. 
So we've got a couple of options of how I can solve this problem. The first thing I'll notice is I have a paragraph which contains my two radio buttons. So what I want to do is I'm going to go and create a special class I'm going to call this class no float. So I have this class I'm going to call no float. I'm going to put a space. I'm going to say input. Do a comma dot. No float space label. Now what this is going to allow me to do is anytime I have an input or a label that is a child of an element that has this no float class placed upon it, I'm going to make sure it doesn't float. That's going to solve my layout issues with my radio buttons. So I'm going to go box, float. If I'm an input field right now, I have a float of left. I'm going to say float none and say OK. Now you notice I still have this issue. This is because my paragraph doesn't have the class no float. I'm going to go up, select no float. And it looks like I have it working here, except for the fact it's been pushed all the way over to the far right hand side. And that's just because I have a text align of to the right. So I'm going to edit my CSS rule, go to my block category, text align left, apply, OK. And you notice it looks the way I would expect it to. I can say go to live view. And you notice I now see it as you would expect. If I want to move it over so it lines up with these other elements, I just need to put a margin left on it. And that will fix that problem for me. Now the one other thing I might have in some browsers, especially if I have a background image on my form, when I go to style my form, and we can do this real easily by going and creating a new CSS cell or a new CSS rule. I'm going to do it for my form tag, and I'm going to give it a background color. I have a background image. Now, if I go into some browsers, this may not appear correctly. And this is because we have floats, we have some clears, but we don't have a clear from our last floating element, which is our input box that we're using as a submit button. So what I'm going to do, just real simple, is down here after my last unordered list, I have a paragraph here. Inside my paragraph, I'm going to put a line break, which is a BR tag. And I'm going to clear left. And that will ensure that it goes down. This way, when I go to whatever browser I'm going to have, I'll make sure it works.